I don't know where you get these people, Les. I'm offended. I think they're your fans. I'm offended and I'm appalled at the core of my moral fiber. Oh, ladies and gentlemen that are tuning in on the World Wide Web. World Wide Web. All w eight of w you. Brian Bradley is with us tonight. McCurdy's Comedy Theater. Pretend that people we, are watching. We met some folks. Uh, and and uh, that, it, it, did you piss anybody off? Anybody? No? I don't think so. I, he is. He'll forget about it in he five minutes. He was pissed off when he came he in. Won't, he won't remember it in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Uh, Brian, uh, 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 and I just, I just want, when I gave the credits earlier, and we'll talk about it, you've done about everything as an entertainer, right? Except play music. No, you've done that. Do you play a musical instrument? No. Okay. Where were you born? Really? Yes. Who cares? I think they do. A uh, uh, little community outside of Philadelphia called Upper Darby. Yeah, really? See? See, they care. Yeah. They care. They care. Because here's what I think. I think that, that when they watch you on stage, I think that they don't think that you would have come from Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. Well, I didn't because when I was three and a half, we moved to Florida. Oh. So I'm like the rest of you guys, right? Grew up here, but not really from here. So I grew up in Florida. Well, if you're at three and a half, you technically all Florida, really. Yeah, to I your have home no memory. memory. I have no memory. I have one, yeah. one or two memories of 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 that town. Uh, we it, lived in a place called Broomall. I remember cracking my head open, and I remember uh, uh, going to the hospital after I cracked my head open. <laughs> Thank you. My brother pushed me down a hillside so that my head would hit a pipe. Uh, and and he. He thought it, it was premeditated? It was. Absolutely. He's been a prick from day one. <laughs> so you have, you have how many brothers and sisters? I have a, one of each. One, one of each. Are they older or younger? Uh, they're both older. And uh, the sister's the oldest? No, he is. He is. And, uh, and, and your mom and dad, uh, uh, you're, you had two parents. Yes. Most people do. No, well, some aren't, some aren't raised by two parents. Father and a mother, yeah. Okay. Okay. And your father did what? Uh, this is sort of interesting. My dad was an illustrator uh, during, before uh, photography took over magazines, and he painted uh, magazine covers through the 40s and 50s oh, wow. for a magazine called Chilton's Motor Age, and they were sort of Norman Rockwell looking. And there was always a pretty girl with her, maybe her, her uh, stockings were ripped, and the mechanics are going, <gasps> you know, they're biting their fingers. And uh, he did that for over 15 years. And, and, and was he always an artist after that? Is that how he made his money? Yes. Photography took over the magazine business, and so he got a job painting rockets and generals and jets with Martin Marietta, and that moved us to Florida. Oh, okay. And then uh, did your mom work or nope. just raise the kids? And uh, when you were growing up, now your dad was an artist, you know, was there anybody in your family that was an entertainer? Was there any, I mean, for you to become an entertainer, was there wasn't anything in your upbringing that took you in that direction? Lucille Ball, Carol Burnett, Dick Van Dyke, Don Knotts, my heroes from TV. Right. But, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Didn't they teach you about comedy? Didn't they make you want to be funny? They were so brilliant. I watched those, those were brilliant comedic performers and there are very few left now sitcoms are populated by pretty people who don't know how to do comedy this with the 50s and the 60s were filled with comedians like Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca and and Carol Burnett Lucy comedians people who knew it Milton Berle well, and they, they were really genuinely funny they were characters they weren't pretty people Charlie Sheen Come on, he's not, uh, or these pretty little people you see on Friends, they're not funny. They're just pretty people spewing lame jokes. <laughs> Aren't they, don't you think? Now when- Why you like Friends? Well, no, no. <laughs> we, and, and I agree, to but, some extent. But they're not when, the characters that no. Don Knotts was, and, and yeah, okay. Because yeah. they didn't have to develop the same way. But when, you agree. I mean, the way, the way that that generation had to develop through comedy, 
They had to, they had to be, uh, uh, they had to be able to, to do more. I don't know what I'm saying. They had to be able to be broader based in their comedic skills. I, well, in a way, I disagree because actor. there's modern sitcoms that have the same degree of brilliance, like All in the Family and Everyone Loves Ray, Everybody Loves Raymond. You have an ensemble of brilliant comedic actors. They're not pretty. They're real people. They're fat. They're thin. They're interesting. They're bizarre looking, and they're brilliant comedic character actors. Raymond, you guys watch Raymond? Is that not the most brilliant show you've ever seen? It's got this great developed backstory of all the characters and it's not just and they wear the same clothes friends you never and you never saw the same outfits right you knew lucy's fancy dress right you know you know deborah's holiday sweater it was just that's just good comedy writing well now going back to you as a kid watching this uh what made you, I mean, when you were that young, did you think, I'm going to do that, I want to do that, or just this is interesting, First I love memory, these people? at four years old, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Yep. So when you, when you, and, and, and we've, we've had this theme come up several times with comedians in this interview, was that I found what I wanted to do, and I did what I wanted to do, and I've always done what I wanted to do. And what I've gotten from the crowd so many times is, Man, that's cool because so many of us don't do what we want to do. Um, but now you you went you, you went to college where? Uh, Gainesville. Gainesville, U University of Florida. <laughs> and chomp, chomp. And you got you get a theater theater degree? Theater degree. Theater degree. Uh, and as soon as you left college, straight to Los Angeles or New York, uh, pretty much. Yeah, L.A. I was gonna moved back to Gainesville and be part of the Hippodrome Theater uh, there. And my friend sat me down, he said, you can do this, it's safe, uh, but you've got to take risks. And, and you'll never know what you can or cannot achieve if you don't take a giant risk and you've got to do that now. And the risk was to leave here and go. Go to LA or New York, go uh, LA, LA seemed friendlier. Well, uh, 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 nicer wow. weather, yeah. right? We're kind of backing up a little bit now. When you were in, uh, when you were a kid, when you were uh, grammar school, junior high, high school, were you were you into performing then? When did, were you in plays? Did you nope. or were you in what? Did, were you into sports? Did nope. you no nothing? I mentioned it earlier when I said uh, uh, I, no. I was back when I was a kid. The, they'd have two popular kids as captains of the team who would then pick teams, and remember that. And it got down to me, the mentally disabled kid, I'm not lying, and the kid with a hole in his heart. And the three of us would walk track together. Because they would, I was never picked for a team. Wow. And I was totally healthy. I was just an uncoordinated, you know, geeky kid. So it was me, and the poor retarded kid's name was Robert Butts. The poor kid just got the... Shit kicked out of him every day. It was awful. The cruel days of where bullying was overlooked, and right. and the poor kid with a hole in his heart. And we'd walk track. And uh, so what? So, I had no friends. So junior high and high school was not a fun time at all. No, no. Okay. And so once you got to well, you you made a statement. It, it, this is what makes comedians. We're we're miserable, lonely people. <laughs> who have no friends, <laughs> we're not the life of the party, we're not the class clown. So that's what creates a comic. You, you develop this insular life where you're not a part of anything, so you're the person who's looking in. You're looking in through the window, and that's where you develop a comic perspective. If you're part of the flow, you're just part of the flow. You're in, you have friends, you're going to parties, you're dating, you're having normal life. I'm the geek walking track with no friends, saving up my lunch money to buy hits of acid in high school <laughs> and sitting in my bedroom staring at my aquarium tripping my brains out during the weekend when everybody else is on a date who said you didn't have fun in high school i was i made a <laughs> i created a beautiful aquarium i'll bet you did <laughs> Now, I, I would dare say the audience that is watching that watched you tonight would not have guessed that 
uh, I, you would have guessed that you were a popular person mm -hmm. in junior high and high school and that you saying you didn't get laid until you got into college was complete bullshit. Nope, last no. semester. That's it. Listen, I, I, I've, been, I've been on the road with comics and this is how universal this theme is with comedians. We sit around and we have the dysfunctional family feud <laughs> where we try to one-up each other on how miserable our childhood was. And some things are painfully pathetic that people oh, yeah. reveal. My, I'm vanilla. I'm nothing. I just, you know, I, you know, big. Oh my God! <laughs> the things that turn yes. people into comedians. Yeah, it's rough. Rough. I, but I, now I didn't have a. I didn't, mine wasn't bad. Yeah, but you're not funny. I know. <laughs> <laughs> No! No! This is on the web. I'm kidding. Come on. I love web. Oh, I, sure I, does. Well, I can bust your balls like that. You know I'm kidding. Yes, he can. But I don't think that uh, that's you know there's this there's this uh, that leads to there's this belief that all comedians are damaged goods. Well, most up. are. But I don't think that most are. Most are damaged goods. Yeah. yeah okay. Some sail through life beautifully, but most are. So when you uh, when you left uh, college, and you were it probably, I would guess that when you finished college, you were ready to go somewhere else. I mean, no, no, I was scared to death. I've never been anywhere else. And you went out to Los Angeles alone. There was nobody uh, in my 1960 Volkswagen which at the time was 12 years old. Uh, all my shit packed around me. I only had the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. uh, 31 horsepower engine <laughs> with a heater. Remember the 60, the anybody mountains. ever have an old Volkswagen? Didn't have a heater. You had to undergrew a little knob down here to let the engine heat in. Didn't have a gas gauge. Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I puttered out to Los Angeles, you know. So when you got out to Los Angeles, uh, what year was that? Uh, let's say 78. 78. So stand-up comedy was not something that was really terrifically on the map no, at that point. No, starting to boom. That was right when the comedy store was taking off. Right. Mitzi Shore had started this club called the Comedy Store that changed the the whole map of comedy because up until then comedians were they'd open for bands or they they were not or one or two were headliners. This is the first club that featured an evening of comedians. Right. right. And she pioneered that. And then, and then later, Bud Friedman brought the improv right. out there. And, and uh, so did you, you're going out there to be an actor. Right. Uh, but how did you filter into the comedy club? How did that? I, I went there to see some open mic nights, and then I learned they had improv and I started taking improv classes. I did not want to be a comedian at first. I was always fascinated with being in an improv group. Right. As a child, I would watch the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, and they had this group called, um, oh shoot, what were they called? Uh, Ace Trucking Company? Ace Trucking Company. Yes. And I always saw myself on a stage behind a brick wall doing improv. Right, which the first club I started in in Denver as a sidebar, George McKelvey was in Ace Trucking Company. Oh wow! And uh, and ran that. And so you you uh, you got in the improv troupe, and then and then eventually, and I'm going to kind of go fast here, just to kind, you eventually ended up. You were in you were on Broadway uh, in Greece. You had one of the main. Uh, well, uh, parts I'll do a there. quick you, quick thing. Okay. Comedy stores started doing, uh, got in with Robin Williams and the comedy store players. Started emceeing. In my emceeing, I started working the crowd, learned some stand up, started doing stand up. Spent 15 years on the road doing stand up comedy. And then got, uh, I was getting really burned out. When you're on the road for 42 weeks of the year by yourself, you get really burned out and you start to get bitter and angry and it's awful. And, right. and then this opportunity came and I got Grease and I did right. Grease on Broadway for four years. Right. And then you've been on Seinfeld. Uh, I did a slew of sitcoms. I was the king of the callback. When you're an right. actor, you're always that close. Like, I was always me and the network's choice. Right. <laughs> or you're the, the producers love you, but they went with the guy with the red hair and the hunchback. Right. You know? Well, you're, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, when Whose Line Is It Anyway came out. 
I got you, cast on that, and you, I was fired. Right. You were. I was between, you and Ryan Stott. I almost got Bruce Willis's part on Moonlighting. And so you're yeah. the guy who almost got the part all your life. I was up for Saturday Night Live, down to the wire twice. And there's a slew of people like me, <laughs> you know? Right. And then I did pilots. That they said, oh, this is going to go. You do a pilot that's, you know, when they make a sample and it aired. And they went, oh, this is great. <laughs> right. It's heartbreaking. It, well, you know, I know, uh, you know, Drew Hastings, right? Or do you not know Drew I know Hastings? The name. Okay. And he was the same way in that, probably did eight, nine pilots that were all should have gone. Yeah. And finally, you get fatigue. You just finally like, this is insane. And now he's the mayor of some little town in Ohio. Uh, but well, was you, there a point where you just said, you, you know, know what? because here's the deal, enough, enough. there, there was a point one night when I'm, and this sounds, sounds like sour grapes, but it's real. I was standing there at the improv and I saw, uh, there was like, uh, Bill Maher had a table, Jerry Seinfeld had a table, somebody else had a table. And then you see their inner circle. And then you see the outer circle. And then you see the outer circle wanting to get into that outer circle. And I sat there looking at these people, this, that Hollywood thing of like, all these people would stab that guy in the back to be in that chair so he could be sitting next to Jerry so that Jerry might like him. And I went, this Hollywood bullshit, what, how gratifying is it? Why, I'm only in it, I was, being a whore, I wanted. I wa right. there was a bit of me that wanted fame and and money because they pay you so much money. Right. And then I went, do I really want to be in this Shark Tank of backstabbing ass kissers to a, get a really poorly written sitcom? And wh maybe, where's maybe the so. value in that? Well, and so it sort of like went. I'm happier on stage. Absolutely. And, and doing what you want to do. Absolutely. And, it, and, and is, we've talked about this, is the reason my wife Pam and I are here in Sarasota because we looked at that before we went. And it's we ugly. knew all the people that were out there that had been through what you had been through and all that stuff. And we went, you know... Why go out there, unless that's what you really want? It's awful. It's, and, and, you know, really in my be. years at the comedy store, you know, you hang around with guys in the parking lot, and the next week, one of them is really famous. You know, I, I, guys I hung out with that we come to my apartment, we'd hang out with, and not to drop names, but to give you an example, like Andrew Dice Clay and Jim Carrey and Andy Garcia and Sam Kinison and, and then Damon Wayans, and then... Bam, bam, bam. And the only one who has any semblance of, oh, this is on the web, I shouldn't say this. Well, most of them are very unhappy. Right. Or dead. Mm hmm. And that was something that I think is true. And I think a lot of people, maybe out there, even know there's a lot of people that are super successful. They have all the money they need, and they're not happy any day they get up. Working on Broadway, we, I worked with so many famous people, and they're just so like, oh, when's it stop? When can I have a life? You know, protect me when we go to this restaurant. And they're just, they're miserable. And? So you, now, uh, give, let me get this right. W uh, when you left Los Angeles, there was kind of an impetus for that in that your dad uh, was ill at the no, time. No, that's after Greece. Was that after Greece? Yeah. Then you, you came here to help take care of your dad. Right. And, uh, and that put, brought you back to Florida, and you've stayed, correct? Yep. Yes. And, uh, and now, at this point, you're, I'm 57. How old are you? 58. 58. Um, thinking about the next... 10, 15, 20 years. <laughs> I mean, you know, because people think, I mean, you know, people just have jobs and, you know, whatever, have an exit strategy. There's a, there's a, I'm going to get to this point and I'm going to retire and do this or I'm going to change and do this. We love what we do. It has, is there a thought to how that next 10 years, 15 years would manifest itself as to what you do? I mean, you can do well, so we many all have things. thoughts, but we don't know. I didn't know. Like, I had a, this eight-year gig at Disney doing improv, and it was this dream job with health care and 
benefits and vacation time, and all we did was go on stage and play. Right. And then it ended. They just closed it. We thought it would go on forever. They just said it's done. Right. And then I spent three years walking around going, what? I don't. What the hell? Mm -hmm. And a friend called me up and said, you should be doing cruise ships. I went, oh, I should have had a V8. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot that option existed. Because right. the club scene, as you know, is really yeah. tenuous. Yes. And so now I'm doing cruise ships. And, and it, grateful as hell to be working. And then right. after cruise ships, I might do retirement communities. <laughs> I, I, you know, That's, I, 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 I thought I the same I've thing. I've done retirement communities. They're awesome audiences. Uh -huh. They're the best because the, the generation of senior citizens now were hippies in the 60s. Right. These are really cool old people. Absolutely. And they've got boner drugs. Yes. And they're screwing like rabbits. Yes. I yes. did a gig at the Villages and they had a syphilis outbreak. They have. The Villages has the highest rate of STDs they're in the state. Fucking like bunnies. Oh man, it's a, it is. Chasing it's a swingers each other down club. Come here, Methel, I'm gonna crack your hip. I know. It's amazing. But they're hip and they're funny and they get it. They're awesome. And Absolutely. we're going to be there. Yes. Yes, not, hopefully. Not performing, living oh, there. Yeah. But if we're living there, we're performing, too. Yes. Because we'll that'll be, get us we'll perks. Be, we'll be booking the Friday night <laughs> yes. show. Come on in. It's a exactly. <laughs> dirty dick comedy. Bless and Brian. Uh, that's exactly what I thought about doing. Yeah. Before we get out of here, are there any questions for anybody in the audience? Anybody have a, a question for Brian? Oh, uh, it, when George and Jerry are writing their pilot, for NBC, um, uh, I had to be Jerry's butler. They probably talk more about the butler than you see the butler. <laughs> but you'd be surprised, to this day, people will go, you were the butler. I'm like, you watch too much Seinfeld. <laughs> that was a pretty small role. But it was a cool story, because you know I talked about getting the call back. When you, when you get a call back, you go and you meet the producers, and it was Jerry and uh, Dave, what's his name? He's gone, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, oh, uh, 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 now I'm spacing his name out. <laughs> anyway, that guy. Anyway. And uh, David Charles, Charles David, what's his name? Larry, Larry David. David. So, uh, and so I walk in the room, it's Jerry and, and Larry David, and Jerry goes, Whoa! And I went, Larry, or, do, do, Jerry. And, and he turns to Larry, uh, what's his name? And he goes, this guy is really funny. And I went, oh, I just booked a gig. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, it's nice when Jerry Seinfeld. Well, I met him. <laughs> I met him up. on his very first night in L.A. Oh, and wow. And we were hanging out in the parking lot buddies ever since. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. We, and, uh, and I took him rafting down the Okoy River. Cool. Thank you. Oh, it, it, that is a, a great story. It, so anybody else? How come you didn't get laid in college? <laughs> All right. My last question, and, and I've asked everybody this: is, is there is there a really uh, is there a great bit that's run, been running around in your head that you haven't written yet that you've wanted to? that maybe is something that you're very passionate about or maybe something that's disturbing to you, uh, you know, something that you would like to almost enlighten people on or, or you know what I mean? Is there, has there ever been, or is there anything going on with you right now where you go, I've, it's been running around, I just hadn't put it on stage yet? No. No. <laughs> okay. Because I, as you saw my stupid act, I don't have... I, I'm not a message guy. I right. like to pretend I have one. But my, my, my message, if there is one, is be playful and don't take yourself seriously. Right. And let's all get in this little game and play together. So I have images in my mind of where I want to take that. Right. I, I don't want to be the big preaching comic with a political message. I think people are, yeah, they're sick of that shit. I, I really want to tap in more, and when I really tap into the playfulness, and like you guys were so playful, and everybody tonight was so playful, and I throw things in your face, 
you know I don't think that you're a stripper, but you played along. And, and there have been times, and I'll call some big guy, there'll be a big shaved head guy. Oh, I'll, you've done I'll, that I'll a go, lot of times. You're Mungo. <laughs> and then at some point in my show, I'll go, well, dude, what's your name, really? He'll go, I'm Mungo. <laughs> like, oh, oh, of course. And so, you know, you just assign, uh, that's, so I have some images of where I want to take the playfulness. And, and within that, like the audience that watched you, you watched Brian and I, at least half, I mean, I know from watching you, at least half the show that you did tonight, if not more, just happened as you talked to the audience, as to the characters that you had here. It'll be different. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. uh, and, and the reason I'm saying that is you don't see that a lot. I mean, we don't have a lot of headliners that come in and do that. They have a set kind of show, and that's what they do. And uh, so I think that it's, it's uh, unique uh, to see your show and to see it more than once. Uh, you should come back tomorrow night. And, uh, and the thing that I'll leave... And try to get row 51. <laughs> it's a really good seat. So it's is. way in the back, in the mezzanine. Thanks, Brian. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.